So we're going to be looking at the graphs of linear equations. This is an Algebra 1 topic, so this is just a review. So again, I will be going through this fairly quickly. Uh, if you struggle with this, make sure you go through it a couple times. So linear equations are functions. A linear equation in standard form, so there's just an equation, not necessarily a function, is ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are real numbers. So if you ever have uh, an equation that has x and a y and a constant, it will be a line. So linear means line. All linear equations except vertical lines can be written in function notation. Vertical lines are not functions, so therefore they can't be written in function notation. So we have f of x equals mx plus b, or a lot of times we write y equals mx plus b. The b in the function is not the same, so we have a b here and a b here. They're different. This is um, standard form and this is function form, or later we'll have another name for this called y-intercept form. So they're not the same. Write negative 3x plus 4y equals 12 in function notation. So really what when it says that we want to write, we want to solve for y. Uh, so we would add 3x to both sides. And when it's in function notation, we like the x part to come first. So we're actually going to write 4y equals, and we'll put the 3x term first, plus the 12. And then we can divide both sides by 4, and I'll talk about something this in a minute or as we go, because there's a, a kind of a quicker way to think through this. So we have y equals 3x plus 12 over 4. Well, this is not necessarily in this form. So 4 is actually a common denominator of both of these terms. So that 4 can go to each term. So we actually can write as 3 fourths x plus 12 over 4 is 3. And there is function notation. Now coming back to this part here, we divided by 4 what we could have done because when you divide both sides by 4, it's really the same as dividing each term by 4. So we could have divided each term by 4, and we would have got to this answer a little quicker. And that's probably what I'll be doing as we work through problems like this in the future. Uh, we're going to talk about intercepts. So what is the x-intercept of a line? Well, it's where a line crosses the x-axis or where a relation doesn't have to be a line. We're going to be talking about lines here. So in this case, a line intersects the x-axis. And uh, so a y-intercept is where a line or relation intersects the y-axis. To find the x-intercept, so to find where something crosses the x-axis, we actually plug in 0 for y. Why do we do that? Well, if something crosses the x-axis, if we think about this, all these points here, so this is the point 1, 0, this is the point 2, 0, this here is the point negative 4, 0, what's in common in all these different points? negative 6.50. As we look at all these points, the y value is always 0 because it didn't move up or down at all. So that's why we plug in 0 for y. And the same concept here to find the y-intercept. You plug in 0 for x because all these points on the y-axis, I'll just show a couple here. This is five, uh, 0, 5. This one here is 0, negative 3, notice all of our points on the y-axis have 0 in the x position because we don't move left or right at all, so that is y. So find the y-intercept of this. So I actually showed the work here already to find the y-intercept. We know that we plug in 0 for x, so we want f of 0, which is 2 thirds times 0 minus 2, so f of 0 is 2 thirds times 0 minus 2. 2 thirds times 0 is 0. 
minus 2 is negative 2. So the y-intercept is, it's a point, so the y-intercept is 0, x was 0, and y is negative 2. So there's our y-intercept. What can we conclude about the y-intercept of any line in this form? Well, if you put zero, if you put zero in for x, m times zero is going to be zero plus b. So the y-intercept will always be b. So the y-intercept, well, b is always the y-intercept. That's really important. Find the y-intercept of 3x minus 7y equals 35. Well, we could plug in 0 for, so to find the y-intercept, we can plug in 0 for x. So we can do 3 times 0 minus 7y equals 35. Uh, we got negative 7y because this is 0. 0 minus 7y, negative 7y equals 35. Divide both sides by negative 7. y is equal to negative 5. So we have the y-intercept is 0, negative 5. Well, from what we just learned from the previous slide, if we have an equation in this form, all we have to do is look at this number, and that's your y-intercept. So we can come over here. We could take 3x minus 7y equals 35. We can put it in function notation. So subtract 3x from both sides. Negative 7y equals negative 3x plus 35. We can divide each term by negative 7. I mentioned that before. We could divide both sides by negative 7, but same as dividing every term by negative 7, and we get y equals negative divided by negative is positive, so 3 sevenths x. Uh, 35 divided by negative 7 is negative 5. So right here is our y-intercept, and so 0, negative 5. So we can do it either one of those ways. Both are fairly easy. So we learned about y-intercept. Now we're going to learn about the steepness of a line. Here we have several different lines, and they're all different lines. Um, so, compare steepness of the following lines. Well, A and B. Um, we could say B is steeper than A, or A is less steep than B. C and D. C compared to D. Well, C is steeper than D. D actually doesn't have any steepness at all. B and E. So B and E. So before we talked about B compared to A, B was steeper, but now E is steeper than B, and this actually is like ultimate steepness. You can't get any steeper than this. A and C actually look like they have the same steepness. G and F. G and F, this one looks steeper, and C and F. C and F, well that's interesting. They actually look like they have the same steepness, but they're in another direction. So we're going to talk about that as we go through here. So we want to be able to, to measure steepness or put a quantity to steepness, and that's what we're going to do here. Um, and the steepness, when we measure steepness, we call that slope. So slope measures steepness. The slope, which we actually use m for, is the vertical distance over the horizontal distance that you move. So um, if we had a line here to get from one point to the other, we have a vertical distance we travel compared to the horizontal distance we travel. And th that is the slope, the vertical distance, the ratio of the vertical distance to the horizontal distance. Uh, just a, a nice way of remembering it with the two R's here is rise over run. And then the equation that we'll use if we're talking about points would be the y so one value minus the second y value divided by the, the change in the x values. So kind of thinking about these, a positive slope moves up from left to right. 
So this would have a positive slope, positive, like these first three would be positive slopes. A negative slope moves down from left to right. So these two would be negative slopes. And so that's the difference between um, C and F here. They look like they're the same steepness, so they might have a same part of the same number, but this one would be positive and this one would be negative. A slope of zero, a slope of zero um, means, so in order to have a slope of zero, you need a zero on top of something. Um, slope of zero means you don't go, whoops, let's make a, here you have a point, you don't go up or down at all to get to the next point, and so it's a horizontal line. And this goes both ways. If you have a horizontal line, the slope has to be zero, or if you know the slope is zero, it's a horizontal line. An undefined slope, which actually would be when you have a zero on the bottom, is a vertical line. And it's undefined because you can't get any steeper than a vertical line. That's as steep as you can get. And so going back to here real quick, positive, positive, positive. This is a slope of zero. This is an undefined slope, and then these are negatives. So these are some important things to know. Actually, this whole page is important. Make sure you know these equations. We use this when we already have the graph. And we use this when we have points that we're working with, like um, two ordered pairs. Find the slope of the following line. So here's where we can do this. Here we have a graph. And what we do is we find two convenient locations here. And convenient means they intersect here, uh, integers usually. So I'm going to pick these two points because they're convenient locations. And I want to find the slope. Well, I just do rise over run. So I choose one point. Um, I have to go up three, so slope is rise over run. So I go up three, so my rise is three, and the run is the horizontal. I go to the right four, right is positive, so it's four. So, so I started with leftmost point, and I got to this point. Well, some might ask, well, can I start with the other point? And the answer is yes. We could have started here. What's our rise? Well, to get to this point, we have to go down 3. So we have a negative 3. And we have to go left 4. So we went down 3. Then we have to go left 4. Left is negative, so negative 4. But we know a negative divided by a negative gives us a positive. So either way, we get the positive 3 fourths as the slope. So when you have the graph, you can use this rise over 1 concept. When you have points, is when you use this, y sub 1 minus y sub 2 over x sub 1 minus x sub 2. So we can say slope is equal to, and so this is our first point, and this is our second point. So we do y sub 1, so our first y value, minus our second y value, so minus negative 1. So be careful with signs here. x, first x value minus second x value. 5 minus negative 1 is the same as 5 plus 1, so that's 6. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6, so we get negative 1. Again, some might ask, well, let's change it to red. Could this be my second point and this be my first point? Sure. We could do y sub 1 minus our second y value, so minus 5, over our first one, so 2 minus negative 4. This will give me negative 6 over 2 plus 4 is 6, which still gives that negative 1. So either way, but what you can't do, you can't do um, 5 minus negative 1 on top and then come back and do 2 minus negative 4 on bottom. And then our last example, or our last slide, it says slope intercept form. This is y equals mx plus b m measures your slope, and b is the y-intercept. So a couple more examples. This one just says find the slope. Well, if we change it to slope-intercept form, the slope will be right there. So there's kind of three ways to find slope. 
you can count it off, rise over run. You can use y sub 1 minus y sub 2 or x sub 1 minus x sub 2, or you can put something in slope intercept form, and the slope will be what's multiplied by x. And so that's what we're going to do here. We would subtract 2x from both sides because we're going to get it in this form right here. So we have negative 3y equals negative 2x plus 6. And then we would divide both sides by negative 3, which is the same as dividing each term by negative 3. And we get y equals negative divided by negative is positive. So we have a positive 2 thirds x plus negative 2, or just minus 2. 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. What we're concerned with here is the slope. So the slope of this one is 2 thirds. And our last example, graph 3x plus 2y equals 6. There's actually a couple of different ways we can do this since we have this slope intercept thing here. We're going to talk about this. So again, just like before, over here, we're going to put it in slope intercept form. So we have 2y equals negative 3x plus 6. Divide both sides, which is the same as dividing each term by 2. And we get y equals negative 3 halves x plus 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now, we want to graph this one. So graphing something in slope-intercept form, this is our Again, this is a review, so I'm going through quick. This is our y-intercept. We actually start with this 3. The y-intercept, so many people put it on the x-axis, but it is the y-intercept. Then from that point, we use our slope. So our slope is negative 3 over 2. Now, this negative is on the outside here. It can actually go to the top. Or the negative could be in the bottom. It doesn't matter. In fact, both are helpful. So Using this idea, we would our slope is rise, so we go down 3 and right 2, down 3, right 2. Or using this form, we our rise is positive 3 and our run is negative 2, so we would come here. Now we can graph that line and we can graph this through these points. And there's the line. I'll probably move this over a little bit to get this more accurate. So there's the graph of that line. Very important that you know how to work with lines, graphing them, finding slope, finding y-intercept.